Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, if you notice, I made a little bit of a change, modification in the title, where I included the <coughs> participation of small-scale producers. Yesterday, I attended uh, the roundtable discussion of the National Academy of Science and Technology, where we discussed about uh, how to improve the agricultural chains and the focus there really was how to link small scale producers in the chain and I think this is a very important focus because um, more often than not the most disadvantaged group in this changing value chains is the small farmer and for a development oriented organization such as NAST and also this community, academic community, particularly UP, I reckon that it's important to give emphasis on how to enhance participation of small-scale producers in this export Cavendish banana chain. Um, for this presentation, I'd like to highlight the following points. I'll start with a framework of analysis, and this is really to highlight the factors that affect the participation or the level of participation of small-scale producers. <coughs> and from this particular framework, I'd like to pin down some factors that characterize the changing agri-food system, particularly in the Philippines, and then focus on the banana value chain. And then move on to evaluating the competitive performance of agriculture commodities. And this I'd like to highlight the banana chain. Uh, by the way, the uh, insights in this paper uh, came from a number of projects largely funded by World Bank. Uh, we did a study on leakaging uh, in the banana chain for World Bank and IFC, International Finance Corporation. And most recently, when we look at the competitive performance of agricultural commodities, by World Bank in a project called uh, Agro Industry Clusters. And then focus on examining the participation. Sorry, I just turned this off. Okay, focus on the participation of the small producers in this export chain. And from there, map out the development, possible options to develop to strengthen particularly the participation of, of these uh, small-scale producers and finally, I'll make some conclusions. Now, this is the framework uh, that uh, would highlight the level of participation of small-scale producers. The idea here is that there are drivers like changing consumer preferences, policy changes, foreign uh, trade liberalization, influx of foreign investments, all these factors actually will lead to some changes in the chains because the suppliers of services, the suppliers of products will have to adapt to these changes. Now, some of these changes will be changes in technology requirements that will also imply changes in financial requirements Management requirements, organizational uh, requirements, some of them will have to consolidate, so they, have, they concentrate to be able to lower costs. There are procurement and uh, standards that have to be established. All of these changes will have to adapt to these, change, to these factors that characterize, that drive the changes. And on the other side, we have the producers, particularly the small producers, who are limited in terms of skills and assets. So if you have this particular set of producers who face these constraints, then it would be very difficult for them when the market restructures to adapt to these changes. So they can be either included or excluded. Now, these changes will create a number of challenges and opportunities 
for development interventions. And this could be in the form of policies, institution, institutions, business models, collective action, research and de development, so on and so forth. Now, let me just um, give you some, this is not a comprehensive set of factors that characterize the changing agri-food system, particularly in the Philippines. Now, one, one trend is that these high value markets, the export and the modern retail chains and the processing chains, is expanding. Uh, just to give you uh, some figures, this would be the <coughs> top grocers in the Philippines. Uh, grocers, uh, mainly the supermarkets. Okay, in terms of number, they increase, sorry. They increased by 16%, average of 16% from 1999, sorry. From 1999 to 2007. And in terms of sales, it increased by an average of 26% per year during this period. And um, it's not only expanding, it's also concentrating. In fact, the concentration ratio in the Philippines is one of the highest in the world and in Asia. Uh, Philippines concentration ratio is about 35% of the top five supermarkets in the Philippines. They accounted for 35% of the total sales of that modern chains. 35%. And that is not uh, difficult to observe or to conclude because you can observe it. SM, for example, is very, very large. In fact, when we uh, liberalized, the retail trade sector was liberalized in 2001, there were only two foreign retailers who came in, Macro and Price Mart. Five years after, bankrupt na si Price Mart, and then, well, a decade after, well, seven years after, Macro is now owned by SM. So it's really concentrating. And on the processing node, so that's on the retail node. On the processing node, it's also concentrating. In fact, the concentration ratio of, of the top four firms, the la top largest firms in the food processing sector, they account for about 30% of the total sales of the food processing sector. That's the concentration ratio. And that's the highest in Asia. Philippines is highest in Asia. That's actually Philippines. And on the production node, however, while the retail and processing are concentrating, the production node is fragmenting. In the Philippines, for example, uh, from 1971, the average farm size is 3.6 hectares, okay, after, well, in 1991, that's after 20 years, now it's even lower, it's 2.2. On the other hand, the developing, developed countries, it's, exp it's actually increasing farm size. U.S., for example, increased in, from 1969, it was just 157 hectares, in 2002, it's 178 hectares. The other trend is that we are slowly, what? It's, we are, our competitiveness as a country is weakening, particularly in terms of institutions, governance, infrastructure, labor productivity, and innovation. This is actually the 12 indicators that are part of the competitiveness index and they actually published every year so these figures come from the global competitiveness report 2010 to 2011 and i just highlighted a number of countries here particularly in asean in terms of institution the lowest is 139 we are 125 institutions would include bureaucratic procedures, corruption, all these elements. Infrastructure is 104. We're actually just a little bit better than Cambodia. For the other countries, we're below. 
in terms of labor market efficiency, we're 111. The other eight were actually the lowest. In terms of innovation, we're 111. We're also the lowest among these countries here. And that's the reason why in 2010, we're just ranked 285 out of 139 countries. The Philippines. Philippines competitiveness as a whole relative to other countries, 139 countries. We have increased though from 87 to 85, up by two points. So let me just um, summarize some of the key factors, the opportunities and challenges from these trends. The opportunity is that it's an expanding high value market, but the challenges would be while the production and retail sectors are concentrating, the production sector is, the retail and processing are concentrating, the production is fragmenting. And this would imply actually high consolidation costs and possibility of market power, particularly buying power. And we have this problem of limited skills and assets of the small scale producers. While we have very, very demanding markets in terms of quality standards, we have, we have this small scale producers who are unable to meet market requirements because of this weak uh, situation. And we have a very weak enabling environment, particularly on these factors I mentioned earlier. But how about the Cavendish banana industry? So that's the agri-food system as a whole. But how about the Cavendish banana industry? Well, before I, I mention some of the key trends, let me just say that banana is the largest export of Mindanao. It's about $700 million a year. And it's also expanding still. In fact, this, this would just be some of the latest um, news in the website. And you can conclude there that firms are expanding. Sonitomo, for example, last year will invest, according to some of the articles here, 5.5 billion pesos in the agro-industrial zone. There's a new investor called Dana Fresh Agri, investing 314 million. There are new investors coming in, and uh, the markets are expanding. Our, high, our, our biggest market for Cavendish banana is Japan and then the Middle East. But we have emerging markets such as Vietnam, and this, this is really growing very fast, uh, particularly Iran, and also Australia is opening up the market. And in fact, it's expanding. Just in 2009, we lifted the uh, letter of instruction, the, the limit on the hectare. Okay, we lifted that. So there's no limit on the hectare now in banana production. And that was in 2009. And the challenges would be a lot. There's a ban on aerial spray, and this would mean uh, what? Shrinking our farm size by 20%, and that would increase our cost uh, per box and per hectare. And you know, this is a very sensationalized issue. Sabi nga dun sa article rain of death do yung aerial spray. Because if you do, uh, ground spray that would actually be very very costly because you have to you know uh, use 20 percent of the total area for roads etc and this pole vaulting is very very common in uh, in banana in fact there was a price war in 2008 and i don't know if this is an opportunity for the small scale producers because that would actually increase price when there's a price war and this would actually uh, what benefit the small scale producers. And this is a very, very important disease that is now uh, a big threat in the banana industry. The Panama disease wiped out the banana business in, in South America in 1950s. And it is now in the Philippines. Now, similar to what I said earlier that the production node actually is fragmenting and this is also happening in the banana industry. In fact, because of the comprehensive agrarian reform law, before, sorry, before, um, 
before car before the car implementation to yung itsura ng chain konti la yung tingnan mo tong production node usually owned yung corporate farms ng mga multinational companies but after car yan marami na may list back may grower ship etc and the problem here is that according to ifad the poorest of the poor in the Philippines are the indigenous peoples, small-scale farmers who cultivate land received through agrarian reform, and this would be the major uh, beneficiaries, uh, the, the major small-scale producers in the banana chain, landless workers, fishers, people in upland areas, and women. Among the causes of rural poverty are decline in productivity and profitability of farming smaller farm sizes. And in fact, if you look at the main producer of Cavendish banana is actually Region 11 where I come from. And particularly Davao Norte. The largest corporate farm in the world is in Davao Norte, Stadeco, Tagum Development Corporation. The poverty incidence, this is from NSCB 2010, the latest <coughs> figures 2006, is 37.7% of the total household. That's the poverty incidence. And our, in, in, in Region 11, is 31% higher than the Region 11 average, although, and also higher than the Philippine average. And that's the main producer of Cavendish banana. So this actually caught our interest. What we did, though, in an agro-industry cluster study, we look at the competitiveness of several agriculture sectors. And Similar to the competitiveness index developed in the compet compet global competitiveness report, excluding the macro indicators, we came up with an index that would account for these indicators of competitiveness. We have profitability, employment generation, value creation, innovation, cost efficiency, labor productivity, linkage to the economy, and these are the specific indicators based on these elements. We can actually get all of these data from the census of establishments. The latest, the latest census is 2006. The 2008 is just an annual census, uh, annual, uh, the annual census, but that's not really a very, very comprehensive census of establishments. But we use 2000, 2000 2006, and 2008 for this indicator except for the forward, for the linkage to the economy, the input-output matrix, the latest 2000, and 2000, but we used also 1994. The result of that study, banana, this is what we call the bubble chart because it's able to plot four indicators of those eight. The uh, employment, employment indicator is on the x-axis, profit is on the I uh, know Y and it's an X and uh, the size of the uh, bubbles would indicate the productivity. This is labor productivity and cost efficiency ratio is indicated by the shape of the color. So the lighter the shade, the more uh, the 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 uh, darker the shade, the more efficient it would be. Uh, you would, you are as an industry. So the 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 farther you are to the right and upper corner of, uh, of this graph, the more competitive you are as an industry. So here, banana ranks first. Cavendish banana ranks first. And if you look at the outstanding indicators, it's really profitability and innovation indicators. However, if you look at, now what we did though is to look at the types of linkages, the participation of the small scale producers in this chain, how they are linked to the buyers, particularly the corporate growers and the exporters. So we, there are actually two types of linkages. One is through growership and this would be either individual or through cooperative or through a corporate farm. And then there's a lease arrangement that's individual lease and lease back arrangement. And this would be the nature of participation of the small scale producers. If you're an individual, of course, you're an entrepreneur. If you're uh, 
a cooperative, you're an entrepreneur because you own the cooperative as well as an employee of that cooperative. So you get money aside from your dividends from the cooperative. And then uh, if you're a corporate, if, if you're uh, this growership in a corporate, the small farmer is just an employee of a big corporate grower. And for individual lease, it could be an employee because if you lease your land, you're entitled to be an employee. Okay? Of that uh, of of the one who uses your land, and uh, if a leaseback arrangement, you are an employee at the same time, a lessor via a cooperative. Okay, an example of this is actually Tadeco. So you have advantages and disadvantages with this type of arrangement. If you're an entrepreneur, of course you can control production, and you have you can actually have the highest possible income up to. Well, if you reach like 4,500 boxes per hectare, that would be around 280,000 pesos per hectare. Um, but you have lower bargaining arrangement because you are an individual, uh, bargaining power because you are an individual and you have limited access to resources. And this is a very, very, very risky and unstable because it's farming. And, uh, but if you're cooperative, on the other hand, you have higher bargaining power if you're a small producer because you are a member of a cooperative can bargain for prices with a corporate buyer and also possible high income more controlled by growers who are there's actually an emerging scheme called individual farming in the cooperative because hindi na masyado naging effective in cooperative meron ng malabas na individual farming within a cooperative system and, and, and I would like—I don't like to discuss the details of this, but the, all of these types of uh, um, <clears throat> linkages would have their advantages and disadvantages. But this is, I think, the more important slide. Based on these types of linkages, we have actually calculated the net income. This is a very small sample survey. We actually would like to increase the sample here, but this would be indicative of the profit profitability per type of linkage. Now, if you notice, the individual grow, growership in highest income, 120,380 per hectare. For a cooperative, it's really very small. For individual farming, this is part of a cooperative system. It's even higher. It's higher than the cooperative. For these, ito, empl employee ka lang eh and then you get uh, money from leasing your land and that's 81 this back is 78 this back through Tadeco this is a, a, a large a corporate uh, corporate grower and exporter it's 118 so highest is individual so it range from 58 to 120,000 that is not really very profitable but if you look at the indicator earlier, the most profitable agricultural commodity is banana, Cavendish banana. But if you look at the per performance of the small producers in that profitable chain, I don't think it's, it's very high. So, and this would give you the, we look at the several cases and try to extract the success factors of successful linkages and we have these conclusions for individual growership it's really if you have good management skills and you have access to capital and you have discipline you are disciplined to follow the production protocols standards then you're likely to succeed if you're cooperative this actually depends on strong leadership and also discipline in following the protocols so, given these challenges and opportunities, what would be the options to develop or to enhance participation of small-scale producers to make their participation more profitable? Well, I think the, the, the main principle here is that you have to be able to manage the profit, the bottom line, okay? So, if you're going to manage the bottom line well, then you're able to strengthen the link. 
with the buyers because you're able to meet the market requirements. Now, and, and, and not just managing the profit, but you have to be able to create an environment conducive to making your venture profitable. So from that equation, profit, sales would be dependent on price and quantity, and that's productivity. And then if you lower the cost, that will increase your profit, right? So the first option then, if you want to increase profitability, is to improve your price. However, it's very, very difficult to influence price in a competitive industry. And that's just economics. You cannot influence price. You're a price taker, so to speak. And we, we did actually run a price transmission elasticity to, give a, to get an indication of the uh, competitiveness, no? if it's very competitive or not. And we saw that it's really, really competitive. We did several um, estimations of price transmission elasticities in other crops. This average of 80 plus is actually high, meaning that's very competitive. The price, the buying price, is reflected in the selling price. 94% of the buying changes in the buying price would be reflected in the selling price in Japan. And in Middle East, it's 84% Korea selling. So it's not, it's for you, for a small producer, you cannot influence price. But you have this option of quality differentiation and product differentiation. If you are able to produce class A banana, that would be $1 higher than class B or 48% higher than the price of class B. If you're able to produce that as well is 250, class A, 255% higher than class C. So if you make your product produce a higher quality banana, then you get really higher profit because of higher price. If you produce an organic banana, that's 30% premium compared to the non-organic, higher price. And if you produce, um, these cluster packs, because um, the the you know, actors of the chain are really responding to market requirements in in Australia and in New Zealand. Because hindi na magkasya yung malalaking banana sa sa mga baon lunchbox na mga bata. Magawa sila ng mga maliliit na banana. The different cluster packs, mayroong maliliit na hand na maliliit na banana para magkasya dun sa lunchbox. If you able to produce those different types of cluster banana cluster packs, packs that would be six percent higher than the non-cluster packs. Of course, the other option is to increase productivity. Very, very clear in the the, the incentives for productivity is very, very clear. In um, <clears throat> Here, if you produce 3,000 boxes per hectare, you will just have a net income of 66,000 pesos per hectare. If you increase your productivity to 4,500, that's 234,000 hectares. Because you will actually, there's a fixed cost. Regardless of your boxes, you have a fixed cost. So if you have higher uh, productivity, you lower down the cost per box because you have fixed you have fixed cost. The total cost would be lower per box. So you you have to really follow the protocols. You have to apply the required technology to be able to hit a higher uh, to have to have a higher productivity. And that would be applying fertilizer, good management practice, etc. And and this is another incentive to increase productivity, in fact, is to what encourage individual farming? Because it's medyo naging unproductive na yung cooperative. And this 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 figure will show you that if you are in a cooperative, your net income would just be seventy seven thousand four hundred. If you are individual farming system, you own a certain farm in the cooperative uh, total farm, no? Kung gusto mong kumasipag ka na member ng cooperative, 
then maging productive yung farm mo. Hindi yung, pag yung, yung buong cooperative ang nagmamanage, ang nangyayari, magbabayad ka pa ng management fee dun sa cooperative. No? So wala, hindi na individualize yung incentives to work harder. So, it would show that for an individual farming, your net income will be higher, 94,000. That's 18% higher. Why? Because you have lower production costs, total costs. Kasi hindi ka na magbabayad sa cooperative. Magbibigay ka pa dito sa cooperative ng 86,000. So, option three, to increase profit is to lower cost of production and marketing. And this will just show you kung ano talaga yung pinaka-important na cost in banana production. And that's basically labor cost. Next is pest, disease, and chemicals. So if you're able to manage this well, okay, ka, you can lower your cost, you can increase your profit. So it's very, very important that you're, you, you have good management skills to be able to manage your profitability. And this would show you also the relative importance of a marketing cost, no? That this would be the production and total total production and marketing cost in the banana chain. Actually, the food cost is just 37%. 63% would be the marketing cost. And there are also policy issues. With CARP, you have there's a study that shows there's a loss in, because of the diseconomies of scale by about 30, 30%. And this would include, the, this is due to consolidation costs, lower labor cost efficiency, and there's also a problem of access to credit with CARP because the value of your CARP land is low. No? That's considered low by land bank, for example. So it's very, very difficult to access credit, even if you are in a cooperative. And studies would also show that if you are a small farm, your um, yield would be 20% lower compared to larger farm. And again, there's an air, this uh, issue on ban on aerial spray, which would decrease the area and would increase your cost, and also an issue of pole vaulting. But the question here is, why is banana more competitive than the other agriculture products? Why is it more competitive than the other agriculture products? Well, I, also, I already mentioned earlier that it's, mo it's very, very profitable as an industry. And therefore, relative to the other industries, it's better in managing profitability and I think the key really here is it has achieved a higher level of cluster development where the vertical and horizontal relationships of the actors in the chain are well established, creating cooperation and competition, enhancing efficiency, in fact, encouraging innovation. And that's really the key why it is better compared to the other agricultural crops. Because here, these this graphs will just show you that for fruits and vegetables, you can see really all, all these, if you're a banana or you're a mango, you face the same trends in terms of increasing costs. But why is banana more profitable? See, fuel, that's increasing, and that's also part of banana. Fertilizer increasing, labor increasing. In fact, for, for these crops, mango, durian, calamansi, papaya, and pineapple from 1998 to 2008, you see this net income, net returns declining, basically because of higher costs. Bas basically because of higher costs. Also for vegetables, the net returns would be decreasing but well compared to uh, man, compared to fruits medyo mas okay okay pa ang vegetables and um, well this is this is the the graph i showed earlier but this is now 
uh, constructed in a value network. And even though there's, the, because of the implementation of CARP, you have fragmented this production sector. But then this entire linkage is really, really strong in banana. It's really a value network where the vertical relationships and the horizontal relationships of the actors in the chain are well established and therefore creating a more efficient production, higher productivity, and therefore more profitable. In fact, we did, I didn't show here, the, we, we did run an econometric model that shows that the degree of linkage increases, okay, affects significantly, the degree of linkage affects significantly the degree of competitiveness of a product. Highly significant. In fact, in when you have a competitive production sector, you also have a competitive processing sector. So, and that's actually based on this study, uh, more recent study on agro-industry cluster by World Bank. And you can also see in this graph that because of the cluster, they're able to consolidate. And when you consolidate, you become more efficient. And for banana, it's very, very important that you consolidate. Here, you see the level of competitiveness by size of firm indicated by the number of employees, you know, number of individuals employed. So less than 20 would be the smaller firm, more than 20 would be the higher firm. For growing banana, Cavendish banana, the competitiveness niya is only ranks number seven when you're a smaller banana banana firm compared to when you are largest number one and that's true for almost uh, except for other crops except hog farming so okay pa lang hog farming no, to, to develop the hog farming when you want uh, you don't have to address issues of competitiveness for small scale producers in hog farming because you can still be competitive even if you're small well at least this is what the data uh, says this is based on the census of establishments uh, 2000, 2006, and 2008. So very, very large sample. Now, this is really the, the interesting part here is the contrast between um, a large value network compared to a small value network or a small, a large cluster and a small cluster. There is a study, uh, well, this, this, this is already finished. 40K um, studies in more than 20 countries focusing on understanding, on linking small-scale producers in dynamic markets. And the conclusion uh, is this. There are four elements of success when you want to link small scale producers in high value markets. You have organized empowered farmers, you have receptive business sector, you have a facilitating public sector, and you're able to facilitate all these elements as well through partnership. Union conclusion. This is very, very true in banana. And in smaller clusters, I'll just give you an example. Based on this study, which actually included the Norman veggies, I'll tell you in a little while the, the story about the Norman veggies. But let me just tell you first the Kalamansi story. The Kalamansi story, from this particular less model, the lessons learned from this case studies, we, uh, we apply that through a value action uh, research helping the small-scale produce, calamansi producers from CI Samwanga link that to Jollibee. We have a respect, receptive business sector, Jollibee. Jollibee is willing to buy one ton per week from the small-scale producers in CI Zamwanga. Okay? We applied a cluster technology so that the technology will meet the requirements of, of uh, Jollibee. The requirement is that it should be this size and the shelf life, it would last another 10 days when the calamansi reaches the commissary in Manila. Okay? So we, 
we, we, we help the small scale producers they, they adopt a cluster technology where they program their production no? and then we consolidate and then help them market to Jollibee okay but Jollibee actually you have buyer than Jollibee ng 1 million is willing to pay the Kalamansi producers after several trials no? siguro mga 5 trials para ma meet lang yung quality standards from CI to uh, Manila the Jollibee is just willing to pay 20 pesos per kilogram and the production and marketing cost from CI to Sambanga would be around 18 pesos per kilogram when they sell to a wholesaler in Metro, in actually Divisoria, that would be 24 pesos per kilogram. When they sell all the lower volume in CI wholesalers, that would just be 26, pero maliit lang ang volume. Even with a higher volume with Jollibee, lugi pa rin sila. Even if the business sector has corporate social responsibility, in fact, that project was part of their corporate social responsibility, they put in money, 1 million, but it has to make business sense before altruism it has to be it has to make business sense so they have to fold it up even though Jollibee lost one million helping the small scale producers because it's better for Jollibee to buy Kalamansi from Mindoro ang, ang, ang window of opportunity lang kasi yung lean months ng Mindoro na wala masyadong Kalamansi you know, they get from Zambonga but then even with why? But in terms of production cost, CI is competitive, lower than Mindoro. But that's four pesos lang per kilogram production cost. Marketing costs is 14 pesos. Transportation from CI to the RC Zamboanga, and then you have to ship. Okay? So that's really the problem. It has to make business sense first. Okay? Norman veggies. Because they understand the market. The market is the supermarket. There's this medium producers who can actually invest in high value vegetables like lettuce. But then the supermarkets want, the demand is variety and frequency and volume. So they have to link with the small scale producers. The small scale producers will have to supply the carrots, the low value vegetables. And then the big ones, the medium would be the high value. Okay? Buy because they have the incentive to partner, they're able to meet market requirements. Okay, so I think what is important here, and I will conclude now, is that well, this would be the, some of the key conclusions. It's, it's a changing agri food system, the Cavendish banana is competitive, but when we develop the small scale producers so that they are able to effectively link with the high value market, in this case, an export market. It has to be an integrated package of service so that you can manage your bottom line. It's not just productivity, but also lowering costs and improving quality differentiation and product differentiation. And you have to have credit and infrastructure as well as policy support. But the most important thing is that for this integrated development intervention to be successful, it has to be in a cluster development framework so that you're able to efficiently deliver this integrated package of service. And it is very, very important that the prime mover is the private sector. It has to be be the private sector, just like the Cavendish banana industry. In fact, here, when you look at this, the facilitating public sector is influenced by this organized private sector. The Philippine Banana and Growers Exporters Federation, for example, when they say that you have to lift LOI 158, that limit on hectare then the president listens because it's really largely driven by private sector. And that is really, really important even when you deal with small cluster development, developing smaller clusters, particularly helping the small scale producers in high value chains.
that's it. Uh, I'm now ready to answer your questions and clarifications if you have some. Thank you. By the way, if you wish to look uh, more closely at Dr. Tigal's uh, PowerPoint presentation, it will be made available at the CIRCA website later this week. So, any questions? Good afternoon, sir and everybody. Uh, maybe uh, may I ask you about the uh, option form? Actually, so uh, I'm I'm less so um, I feel very interesting when you mentioned about the CAP policy C A I P and it in effective. So it option for sir. Yes. yes. So it in efficient due to the loss of economies of scale. So can you explain a little bit? <laughs> Yes, um, when you, for example, fragment the, the farms, then you have to increase consolidation cost. Before, if you're just a corporate grower, you actually have one big farm, for example, contingent, you know, one big farm. So when you uh, apply the spray, when you manage the entire thing because it's contingent, it's, it's not fragmented, it's not all over the place and therefore you are more efficient in terms of producing that particular uh, producing in that particular setup whereas when it's fragmented it's, it's less efficient and uh, in fact not just in terms of applying the production technology but also because you now deal with different risks with individual farms and the, the capability of farmers when they're fragmented they vary now they transfer the risk would be transferred to the small to the farmers and then they vary now when you have one big farm and then there's this one management group who can who can um, manage that farm that would be more efficient way of, of producing banana and this is actually not uh, based on my study this is a study from dr Rolly D's paper uh, who looked at this. Uh, Dr. Balisakan also did an econometric modeling on uh, CARP impact and the conclusion would be the same. It's this 30% came from Rolidis. Uh, it's for Guerrero or just for banana? Only for banana. Only for banana. Yes. I am Dr. I am a I am interested in the, your findings that it is better to make some clustering of the small partners. But who is going to initiate this? Are you going to do it as an extension service or the DA or some other uh, organized uh, banana partners? That's that's a very very important question. Um, the the banana industry, the Cavendish banana, is basically managed by the private sector. The, what they call the champion of the chain would be the multinational companies, the growers, and the corporate growers, which are actually also multinational companies. And, and so it's, it's, it's already part of that system where um, the clustering is largely driven by the, by the private sector. Now there are several cases where you have a government or a non-government organization become the facilitator of that particular chain. And most of the, well, the lessons learned from this is not very, um, it's not very successful when government or non-government organizations, there are a few examples where when NGOs or government facilitate the linkage between small scale producers, the link linking small scale producers to high value chains, it's it's uh, not very successful. So, um, but the 
for example, um, one one example though is the if you heard about the Upland Marketing Foundation Incorporated, that's an NGO, non-government. You heard about Healthy Rice? That's the facilitator there is Upland Marketing Foundation, which is an NGO, non-government organization. But it's uh, it's successful, but in other crops, except Moscova, Moscovado is successful, but in other small other crops, hindi masyado. So uh, I don't think government government will just have to help because it has to be strategic, smart subsidies in a way when you deal with small scale producers. Not really subsidizing cluster development, but just creating an environment so that cluster development initiatives would prosper and help the small scale producers. Okay. What I'm thinking is possibly on the, uh, the uh, uh, under the cooperative, you said that the uh, uh, individual uh, partner can uh, do his uh, banana farming under the, or separate from the cooperative. Mm -hmm. It seems that it is uh, get, uh, more profitable. So what I see now is that someone should uh, tell them that this kind of uh, uh, agree Mature in banana is more profitable. So, who is going to initiate that? You have the, already expressed that the NGO and the government is not an addictive. Uh, would the UP now have some extension service to, uh, to, to think of that? I think, I think when there's a very successful business model, more often than not, the entrepreneurs would pick that up. The entrepreneurs will pick that up. Um, have you talked about uh, have you talk about, uh, this uh, seminar to the entrepreneurs? Well, this actually part of the, especially the evaluation of the types of linkages, the profitability, that was uh, presented last year to the banana actors, multinational companies, the growers. They actually um, including this small. The small, well, this individual farming system is, is, is relatively new, started in 2008. And this is, this, this has to be tested. I don't know if they have replicated this already because uh, the Iho plantation started this. And this particular case, tatlo lang yung kinover namin na individual farming. And that's the average, higher than the cooperative. But I, this is a small sample survey. We would like to make it, in fact, bigger, so we can. That would really be, uh, you know, more um, what convincing if we're going to 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 establish whether that individual farming is really a business model that has to be replicated. But um, I think now it's being adopted by several cooperatives. And it would also depend on the political climate in the cooperative because some cooperatives do not allow that. Some co cooperatives do not allow that. If you heard about uh, uh, um, this NGO in uh, Davao, based in Davao, Farm Co-op, this is a cooperatives of most, most of the Garden Farm cooperatives are members of this Farm Co-op and they're trying to promote individual farming. Um, but again, if you have a cooperative na my leadership na hindi open to individual farming, they will not adopt individual farming because they will actually lose some of their control on individual farms. And they, they, some of the individual farms, are well, all of the individual farms will not remit some of their income to the cooperative because that's now individual, individualized. That's actually a new trend. Bago lang po yan. Good afternoon, sir. I would just like to be enlightened on option three. Uh, it's a, yeah, you've mentioned that one of the strategies would be to reduce the cost of production and marketing, specifically on the labor costs. I was just wondering on um, 
what could be the probable implications of lowering the labor cost in the poverty, uh, poverty incidents in the region? My understanding is that if you lower the labor cost, of course, there would, there might be people who would be losing their jobs. And what could be the implications of that in the poverty incidents in the region? Mm. Good question. Definitely, it will have an impact on because some on the labor sector because some of these small farmers are employees as well. Um, but in the Philippines, you have if you the agricultural wage is has two categories: the plantation and non-plantation crop. And the, a lot of these multinational companies pay the plantation crop, which is much higher. In fact, than the the non-plantation crop. The plantation crop wage is higher than the plantation non-plantation crop wage. In fact, yung mga ano nila, unions nila, hindi hindi nagbabargain about increasing yung minimum wage, yung adapting minimum wage. Kasi way up na sila sa above the minimum the minimum wage. But um, yes, this will have uh, an impact on the labor sector, but I don't know exactly how it would impact uh, relative to its impact on lowering cost, increasing efficiency and profitability. In it. That's a good study, actually. Um, because they've been complaining about increasing wage uh, because of the RT, Regional Tripartite Wage Board. Siguro in the last five years, three times na yan increase Okay? Three times na nag but it's always above the minimum wage, particularly for for plantation wage, for Cavendish banana. Even greater than uh, for pineapples. Halos pareho lang yun. Oh. I don't know if you're familiar with the celebrated case in pineapple. They <laughs> said they asked for like 700 pesos a day. You know, close down na yun. 